All right, hello everyone and welcome to the fourth episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. My name is Robert Lewis. I am your host for today's show. I have a guest host, uh, Zach, from our customer service team and brewmaster extraordinaire here. Thank you. How's it going? All right, so like you guys all know, uh, we film live every week on Facebook from our office here in Tucson, Arizona, so we appreciate all those who are tuning in to watch us live. If you are not able to watch us live every week, you can get our episodes on our blog at mrbeer.com slash blog, on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash mrbeer, and on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash mrbeer. And then while we're on the topic of social media, if you could please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube page. That would help you stay up to date on all things that are Mr. Beer and what's new and what's going on in our industry. Um, also, if you want to learn more about Mr. Beer or just Brewing with Mr. Beer, join our Facebook group, Mr. Beer's Brewing Society. Uh, this can be found by going to our Facebook page, clicking on the Groups tab. You can join from there, or you can search Mr. Beer's Brewing Society in the Facebook search bar. And then from there, we should ask you to answer a few questions and you'll be able to join. I'm in there, Zach's in there, we have Ashley in there as well, answering your questions, just contributing to, to the whole society. It's pretty fun. Uh, if you are a first time watcher of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer, welcome. We appreciate you joining us for today. Uh, but before we dive into today's topic, let's talk about what we are drinking today, which does relate to our topic, though, interesting enough. So I'm drinking one of our clone recipes, egocentric. Egocentric jerk, yes, which is amazing. It's just the clone of Arrogant Bastards. Yeah, Stones. Yeah, Stone Brewing Arrogant Bastards, which is amazing. I'm drinking Day After Day IPA, which is a clone of the uh, All Day IPA. Yep, so these are some of the beers that we're brewing for this week. Um, so this leads us into today's topic, which is clones for craft beer week. So it is craft beer week for those who don't know. It's a fun day around the office here where we drink beer all week long and pick up beer from local breweries. So it's kind of fun. So we're releasing seven new recipes this week and we're cloning some of our favorite craft beers, which is really interesting. So we've released four so far this week. We have three more to go this week. So we thought it would be a good idea to just discuss them and talk about how to brew them and tips and tricks about the whole process. Since Zach created and brewed all of these recipes, he's the ideal person to uh, you know, discuss this, answer some quick questions, and just kind of provide any insight that you might be wondering about when you're brewing these. So to start with, the first recipe released on Sunday was our day after day IPA, which is what Zach is drinking, which is uh, from uh, Founders Brewing. So this one is kind of a hoppy but sessionable IPA, I would call it. It's a lot of bitterness, yes. low, low ABV. Yep but it's great for summer, which is coming around the corner. So I noticed that this recipe uses an LME for the boil, which is a little different from what we do. So do you have any tips about brewing uh, this recipe and boiling LME in general? Well, usually hops respond well to being boiled with sugar, and that's how you can extract more of the bitterness and flavor. So using the LME lets us get those extra flavors that you might not normally get from just throwing it in with hot water. So. Yeah, and this beer packs a bitter punch, which I definitely enjoy. All right, so we'll move on to our second recipe that was released on Monday. This is our Thomas Tanks Farmhouse Ale, which is a clone of Boulevard Brewing Tank 7 Farmhouse Ale. That was a mouthful. Uh, with this recipe, we call for boiling a gallon of water for 60 minutes. Now, this is a lot more than what we traditionally call for. Usually with simple Mr. Green instructions, it's boiling four cups. four cups of water in your four-quart pot. Uh, why did you choose to boil a gallon of water for this? And then tips on people who have not boiled with that much volume before. So usually we can get away with extracting what we need from the hops. Again, it comes back to the hops and the IBUs. So more water means there's more material for the hops to disperse into, more opportunity for that bitterness to build. So instead of sending six ounces of hops, we can send one ounce of hops and actually extract all of it from there. Um, as far as cooling it down, as long as you keep the, the other water in your keg and the topping off refrigerated, you should be great. And then this is a question that I had. That, that some of the volume while you're boiling will dissipate, so you won't really yield one gallon of water at the end. Right, yeah. exactly. You'll still end up topping it off at the end. Okay. I think that's that's a good question. Then usually use a, a bigger pot for this. I would assume you use yeah. a 15 or a, what size pot did you use? One and a half gallon. One and a half gallon pot. Oh, it's a small soup pot. Cool. All right. So the third one was released yesterday. It was the egocentric jerk, which is what I am drinking here. <laughs> um, so a clone of Stone's Arrogant Bastard. So for a very complex beer with a lot of multi flavors, a lot of hops, a high ABV. What right into making this recipe? I mean, it seems relatively simple from an ingredients perspective, but its flavor is off the charts. <laughs> well, it's kind of just a matter of balancing out the color, 
the multiness and the IBU. So there was a few iterations that went back and forth, but for the most part, it's just kind of finding that balance and then sticking your claim on it. Yeah, it came out really well. It's got a great color, <laughs> got all that maltiness and all that hot flavor that I think you would want out of that. Um, so today's release was our Rusky business, <laughs> a clone of North Coast Old Rasputin Russian Imperial Stout. Now this beer has a ton of complex flavors, has a whole lot of hot malt extract. So it would be a tip you give to someone who is who is brewing this beer with all those fermentables that are in there. This one will probably definitely overwhelm your standard LBK. So what we did here was use our Brewmax 2G. It has enough volume and that fancy swanky Kroizen collar that allow you to uh, get some of that Kroizen without letting it foam over. So that was definitely key for that recipe. Yeah, okay, and then I think you, you can brew this in the LBK, but you're gonna wanna put it on something or in something that can- A cookie sheet, yeah. any way to catch some of the spill. Some of that spill, yeah. And then usually if it leaks, Kind of just let it alone and leak. It should be fine. Don't mess with it. Yeah, just leave it be. And if you're really worried about it, you can rinse a little bit off. But for the most part, just let it be. All right. So now as we move forward, it's time for the sneak peek of what is to come. So we haven't told anyone about what we are releasing uh, coming up, but we are working on it. So tomorrow, we'll be releasing our 542nd IPA, which is a clone of Dogfish Head 90 minute IPA. Now this beer is a hot monster with what three ounces of hops? Yes. During the boil, or an ounce and a half of hops during the boil. Ounce and a half in the dry. Yes, ounce and a half, and then so three ounces of hops total. So if you read the instruction on this when you get there, you have to do a hop addition every five minutes for 90 minutes. But I think it's definitely worth it. We tried it this morning. It, it blew me away. So how would you talk about how you clone this recipe and why doing those hop additions like that are necessary for this? Well, it goes back to what I was saying about the length of time you boil affects the bitterness. So not Dogfish had, had tried continuously adding hops for one of their batches for the 60 minute, and they loved it, so they did a 90. And it's basically just, you, get, you start off at the extreme bitter levels and you work your way towards the aroma and flavors. So having it continuously spread out through the recipe kind of gives you a depth of flavor that just one or two or three simple additions don't. Yeah, yeah, it, it's really good, I recommend watching a Netflix show, putting on some tunes, doing Tiger, something to something. kind of work, work out during this process. But the 90 <laughs> minute boil will definitely be worth the wait oh, yeah. and worth the time of putting in those hops. All right, so on Friday, we will be releasing our Breakfast Stout A. That was my Canadian impression. <laughs> uh, it's a clone of Founders Canadian Breakfast Stout. So this beer has maple syrup, bourbon, oak chips. Sounds amazing. This recipe has a ton going on, any pro tips for when someone is brewing this up. This seems a little more advanced than what we usually do. This one is gonna be along the lines of the Rusky. It might be a little feisty in the fermenter. So what I would recommend is having that cookie sheet handy, but also give it some time. It's gonna take some time fermenting. It's gonna take some time in the bottle. It'll be worth the wait, trust me. So now going off script here for a second. With this one, with the maple syrup and the bourbon, uh, you recommended putting that into a jar with the oak chips yeah. and soaking that flavor in. Yeah, it's for the whole period of the fermentation, basically, except for the last week. And then you'll add the whole jar, your oak chips and all, to get the maximum amount of extraction for those flavors. Yeah, so just make sure you have an available mason jar if you're going to brew this one up so you yeah. can do all that. Um, so the last recipe that we were releasing on Saturday is our Pennsylvania traditional lager, which is a clone of Yingling's traditional lager, lager. Uh, I think this one is a long time coming. It's something that our customers have asked for a lot. For a lot. And even Zach knows this. I mean, I've been here for six years. They've been asking since then. <laughs> so it's, it's been a long time coming. So kind of what is the process you use to clone a recipe like this? It's such a traditional recipe and it's so very basic but has a lot of flavors and just has, you know, yeah. a great presence. It's again goes back to sort of fine tuning and tweaking, but uh, most of the time we just start off looking at the specs. You can usually find most brewery specs right online for their beers and and whatnot, untapped and all that jazz, but uh, we try to find those things that we already have close and then see what we do to tweak. So if it's a little extra hops, a little extra grain, dial in those multi bready flavors, whatever it takes. Yeah, so I think that about wraps up our clones for today. Um, these are probably some of the best recipes I think we have ever made. Thank you. I know Zach's had a best time for it's these. It's been, been a blast. Fun. Yeah, it's been a blast. Yeah, so clone recipes, I think we're gonna start doing a clone series. Uh, Zach wants to release one once a month, probably starting 
next month since we're releasing seven this month. Yes. So we'll start working on that um, and seeing which one to clone. If you have clone ideas, please shoot us a note on social media. Let us know. Send an email to the customer service. Let Zach know what you'd like to see because there's a lot of beers out there in the country that we don't even get here. Yeah. Like Yingling does not come out this far, but I've tried it. Everyone's had it, so we know what it tastes like. So yep. those are definitely original ones that we'd be interested in doing. Um, so we appreciate you taking the time to watch us today. We hope you learned something or just had a good time. Uh, don't forget to join our Facebook group to learn all you can about Mr. Beer. Like I said, myself, Zach, and Ashley are in there hanging out, having a good time. Um, until then, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys.